Namaste. Ladies and gentlemen, yogis and yoginis, my name is Roman Singh Nahal, and this is the best of Evergreen San Jose show. And at the best of Evergreen San Jose show, we talk real estate, we talk local business, and you know we talk the best of Evergreen San Jose. And in this episode, we meet Mike and Rose of Balance Yoga Center online.com balance yoga center san jose let's get to know these local small business owners one of my favorites let's do it how's it going welcome guys i'm roman signal it's the best of evergreen san jose show the best of evergreen san jose show we talk about real estate we talk about local businesses and most importantly we talk about the best of evergreen san jose and you're looking at them right now I'm with mike his beautiful wife rose uh we are at balance yoga center San Jose. We got like 20 different cameras pointed at us, so if we're looking in all <laughs> different directions, uh, you know why, but what is going on, guys? How are we doing? Doing great. We're blessed. We're lucky. Look at this spot. We were just talking about how far you guys have come along. It's been seven years. So you have seven years at the, with the yoga studio here in, uh, in this area. Wonderful. It's a, good, it's a good place to be. Amazing, amazing. So I, I came here and I'll show you guys a, a tour later. Amazing place. Uh, offer a whole bunch of different varieties of yoga that um, I definitely cannot explain. So I'll let Micah uh, explain. What what are a, a few, Mike? We got I know we got Pilates. We got well, we have hot Pilates and we have hot yoga. Those are the two most popular things that we do. And then we also do everything from Yin Yoga, which is like a gentle yoga style, and Vinyasa Flow, uh, which can be more of a rigorous flowing style of yoga. Sweet. But, uh, a few years ago, hot Pilates. Uh, about and it's taken over. It's very popular. Uh, it's, it doesn't take more than a class or two to get into it, mm -hmm. and um, it delivers strength and uh, cardiovascular fitness in a, in a short amount of time. Uh, the classes of the, the exercises are simple but right. not easy. Right. It's a challenge in every class and lock your knee. Yeah, <laughs> you don't have to lock your knee. That's 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 in the Beaker classes. But you you certainly get the benefits of um, increased strength and cardiovascular fitness, and, and it removes body fat like no other exercise system I've seen. So and you, if you came in and decided to do a class, a hot Pilates class every other day mm -hmm. for a few months, mm -hmm. people would start asking, what, what are you doing? What are, why, you know, why are you so fit looking? Uh, I was reading up on, on your last blog you posted. Uh, it was uh, Gotha? Gosho. Gosho. Yeah, Gosho. Okay, so Gosho. Gosho. Vishnu Gosh was Bikram's guru. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's, it's, it's almost the root that people it's forget. Yeah, it, it goes up to him. Contortion. Well, yeah, so there's, you know, the, the history of yoga. <laughs> we did it. About where, uh, we did it. In, uh, I'm sorry, contortion. Well, they're uh -oh. adding the contortion to it. You know, yoga Can goes you, back thousands of years, but this practice that we do now, the exercises in a typical yoga class, really are only like 100 to 150 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, how did it? How did all of that happen? Um, and so it's it's people now are getting into well, what really? How old is this stuff? How old are these specific exercises we're doing now? Where do they come from, and how did it all come to be? And a lot of it has to do with the history of, of India and yep. um, the British releasing control in the, in the turn Oof. of the century. We can you do a whole podcast on that? And, right, and, <laughs> and, and and what happened? And, and yoga was basically no one was doing yoga in the mainstream, and then all of a sudden. <laughs> Indians were free from the British, and now they're able to exercise. And, and people and, people looked at it like it was kind of a circus act, but it was much, much more than yeah. that. There's thousands and thousands of years that go back. Yeah. Yoga. Well, so now you have people that want to teach yoga and bringing it to the everyday people. Well, how do you how do you get people engaged? Like, well, what are they doing over there? Well, of course, if you're doing contortion type exercises, mm -hmm. then that certainly is going to draw a crowd. People want to see the yogis that can bend and twist. In an extreme way, right. and then you're going well. I want challenge to. each other. Oh, there's yoga challenges. Yeah. So then right. you know you go. Well, I want to go and do that. And then all of a sudden, it went from people up in the hills and the caves doing yoga to mm -hmm. you know regular people doing that's, yoga. That's and that was on, a it's big on seeks. That was I, think, a big I think that's the biggest underestimated thing is how many different forms of yoga there are. Just like the misconceptions of how many different forms of uh, meditation there, there are, right? But I loved, even as an athlete, that there's an entire science about we're squeezing off an area. And yes. once we squeeze off an area, we, we, you know, we take away the blood from going there. Yes. No, what we're doing is we're actually releasing all the blood back yes. in. But when it does come back in, it's going to 
clean the area. Fresh right? oxygenated right? Exactly. blood. And, and anything, any, anything dead in there will get. Yeah. And, then, and and this is with hot temperature, but the same goes with cold therapy. It's the same idea. What, what are we doing? Yeah, we're freezing up the area. We take that ice back off, and what's going to happen? Blood's going to rush yeah. in there and, and push out uh, everything else. Um, so what? First question I always ask is, uh, what the hell got you? What's the story, man? What got you in here? What so, make for, for anybody who's listening? Because er, you know our lifestyle, right? Yeah. As far as business, there's there's pros, there's cons to both. Sure. Um, what was kind of uh, your your story that made you go? You know, so, I the time. Yeah. So I I was a real big cyclist, and um, I would go cycling two three hours a night. I was cycling so much that I kind of cycled my way out of a group of friends. Right, right, you know, when, you, <laughs> when you're going for two to three hours, people that just don't want to go riding with you. Anymore. Yeah, yeah, you're not fun. And I was doing that. With. I was doing that for a very long time, and I got in very good shape. And then uh, all of a sudden, I was going through a divorce. And when you're riding alone for two or three hours and going through a divorce, it becomes a very lonely place to be. Right. Isn't and it crazy how those are also the times where you find ourselves the most, right? Or yeah. And I just realized that I needed to be around people. I needed to meet people. Um, at, at the time in my life, all my friends were coupled up. They were all married. And I remember sitting on a Friday night going with all my coupled up friends going, so this is it. Huh? And, and, and you don't want to, yeah, and you don't want to be, exactly. And you don't want to be mean and be a vibe killer. Uh, and that's what's going on with my best friend. It's okay. He's not Facebook. He's a cop. <laughs> he's, a, he's a cop. But he doesn't want to ruin the vibe. But he also feels that I'm freaking third wheel. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. But, but uh, continue on. So I, I just decided I wanted to do group exercise, and a good friend of mine said, you know, you should try yoga. And I said, okay, group exercise sounds good. Yoga sounds cool. I started, started with just teaching classes. No, 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 no. no, no. I, I started going around the area, in the local area, looking for yoga classes and, and oh, okay, okay. cycling the way I, I was cycling up mountains. So I okay, was okay. in good shape. Student first. And I thought to myself, yeah. these yoga classes are very boring. Mm-hmm. And then when I, on a, one Friday sure. night, I looked up and I said, 105 degrees yoga yes. and 105 degrees. Now, that's interesting. And I walked in Saturday morning. I took a class. I basically crawled out of that class. The fact that it sucked is what it you It was like. so hard. I came back. <laughs> yes. That was my I, first experience here, and I was hooked. I yeah. thought to myself, "This now this is, is unique. That was not boring. That was super challenging. I came in. I said, what do I wait, like three days? She goes, no, you bought 10 days. You come. Ten days in a row. So you said to me, the third one. <laughs> yeah, well, so, you learned from uh, I was like, damn it, damn it, he's right. I'm not going to let him win. On day 11, I bought an annual pass. I put the bike up. Yeah. Came in. Did I think I missed three classes that first year, and I was hooked. Right. And then um, somewhere along the first couple years, I decided uh, I really like the business model. Um, it's relieving all the stress that I've, that I've had at my job, mm-hmm. um, meeting people. Um, I ended up meeting my wife at the yoga studio, right. through, through friends at the yoga studio, and... Um, a lot more social. Talk about small talk, right? You just you're interacting. Well, I was interacting with a friend. She said, you know, hey, and the nine to five these days, we, we cave ourselves away. We don't even know it. Yeah. So I I really found a home in the yoga studio. I liked I liked the movement system. I was starting to get a lot of uh, physical and mental benefits from it. Mm-hmm. I felt that um, if I could learn how to teach, uh, I figured that would be a prerequisite, and I know I had the skills to own a business like this. So mm-hmm. step one is teacher training step two is learn how to teach step three would be how, how do I turn this into a business and uh, that was well ten years ago so yeah I am seven years in business and um, it's great that's awesome yeah. yeah we were dating you know when he first went to teacher training and he was you know right when he was thinking about going to teacher training was like right at the time when we started dating and so he was like I'm, I've always done something that I love. Like I always knew that I wanted to work with young children. I always knew that I wanted to be a teacher, and so That's I was tough. always that. Not everybody finds that. You're lucky. You're amazing. lucky to find that. Yeah. Oh, I've been so lucky. I'm so blessed in that in that way. I still have friends. You know, I'm in my mid thirties. I still have friends that don't know what they're doing. Right. And uh, so he's saying to me, you know, I'm thinking about like quitting my corporate job. You know, he was a buyer for a big like company. everyone listening wants to right now, but yeah. they're afraid to. And then go to in, go into this go yoga teacher training in Hawaii for nine weeks. And I'm looking at him like, I don't understand how anybody does a job they don't love. So, yeah, like, we're not, like, I mean, we're dating, but we're not married. We don't have any children. We don't have, like, you don't have anything that's tying you to this place. Like, go and follow your passion and, like, see if this is going to make you feel happy. That's very, very cool. And you're, and Rose is teaching preschool. She's an educator. Uh, like you said, you're lucky. Unlike me and Mike, you knew what the hell you wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, from the beginning. Uh, what, what kind of, you just took that on. 
basically did that. Yeah. I mean, what, about, me, what about schools? You guys dropped out after middle school, or where did you, you, you guys go to school? <laughs> <laughs> we, well, we got yeah, Snell, Snell, Snell Blossom Hill over here. That's what yeah. I've gotten so far. Yeah. <laughs> and yourself, Rose? Uh, you so I grew up in Palo Alto. So I went to Palo Alto High School, went to Pali. She's I know, I know. <laughs> but I've been in San Jose for 10 years now, so I'm a San Josean now. But He's Palo Alto, is what she's trying to say. He's Palo Alto. I don't know if I no, can no, claim it's that. Great, but... it's, a great, it's a great place. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I grew up there, and uh, and I went, I, you know, obviously I went to preschool myself, and I was in the Jewish community, at the Jewish Community Center, and when I was, uh, like, in, in middle school, in the summer, I was like, what are you going to do? You can find a summer job, right? So I decided to do, you know, be a camp counselor, so I was working in a preschool summer camp, Three weeks in, and I was like, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. I want to be with young children. This is it. And so that's what I did. I just, I had some mentors there that really, I just came back every summer till I was done with college. I went to Scripps College down in L.A., part of the Claremont College system. Ma- majored in psychology, thinking maybe I'll do child psychologist stuff. Um, and then was like, yeah, I don't want to deal with only children who have problems. Like, if, right. I, if I'm in school, then I'll have some children who have some issues that I can help them with. Right. But also have some typically developing kids, like, for my own sanity. You'll be franchising so, your own uh, school type preschool place one day. Watch. We'll talk, we'll talk about that later. I'll introduce you to somebody who's probably watching right now. But I was saying, <laughs> daycare, daycare is uh, huge. People spend yeah. more on four years of CSU than they do on like babysitters nowadays. Like, I remember Bob said that at State of the Union speech. So yeah. It's actually uh, very lucrative. So, somebody who's never came to Hot Yoga Mike. I remember that everyone remembers the first day. I should have brought two towels. Yeah, I should have. Just, <laughs> I should have done this. I should have done. That. What's the the typical? I know it's probably exhausting for you, um, spiel for anyone's listening to prep for the first class. Uh, don't be late, like I was probably about five <laughs> times, and, and I ended up liking Mike because he kept it real. He said, "No, no, no, no. get the hell out of here. You're well, not coming you in." Oh well, no! But here's the thing. <laughs> I, I later learned that he would actually be hurting me if he let me come in yeah. because the warm-up is no joke. We're not talking about warm-up, right? We're talking about the fact that uh, – maybe talk about that uh, a bit, Mike, that you're doing – you're standing up, you're doing huge exercises because yeah. you want to get the blood circulating well, to prepare you for what's about to happen. Yeah, so you know, with the yoga class, you don't want to be late um, only because the it's a – a sequence and you're warming up so each 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 exercise starts and uh prepares you for the next and if you come in a little bit a little bit too late it's just not gonna you're not gonna get it you increase your chances of passing out (laughs) yeah it's not in the room um and there's a beginning a middle and an end and i want you to stay for the whole thing once you get the whole experience and it it, it certainly reduces the risk of injury especially as a beginner and and back back to the macho misconceptions Uh, after that i was like okay wrestlers okay martial artists come with me Come, come with me to, uh, uh, and they all underestimate and they go, oh man. Yeah, it's tough. Or, or they go, dude, I can use this to cut weight. I've been doing it all wrong, you know? Yeah, and, you can generally uh, cut right in the room, for sure. I, I remember I've I saw, I saw a professional bodybuilder like behind me one day when I was in here. So. Yeah, I've had I've had people come in to cut weight. I mean, I, I you could easily lose, I don't know, three, five, eight pounds, depending on how much you're sweating and how much time you spend in the room. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, it's not boring in there, so if you're cutting weight, Right, so absolutely. Let's go do that route. So the first time, uh, uh, just show up of, early. Show up. Yep. No, no empty, no empty stuff. Or I remember this, every time I brought stomach. somebody here, it's like I would give them this whole spiel, and they'd be like, "Relax." I'm like, "All right, man, I'm trying to help you out." There's just things that I wish I would have knew, right? <laughs> uh, like the mat, what you're gonna do with after, yoga what you're mat, wrapping. Your, yeah, yoga you gotta mat, just do it. You know? A lot of towels if you sweat a lot. Make sure that you're you don't have. You know, I didn't eat the big burrito before class. Oh. No, 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 no. For me, like, I can't eat up. anything, like, three hours I, I don't think it's, it's just you, Rose. It. I think it's, like, <laughs> it's that it's that big of a deal that, well, what is the, the rule of thumb is, what, two hours? Or to make sure it's small two, meal, make sure it's not heavy. Yeah. Two, two or three hours, we don't have It depends on your metabolism, wise. too. Some people, yes. though, uh, do need, um, like, half a banana and a, and a scoop of nut butter to, yep. to, to just put yeah. something in their stomach. So it really depends. And you don't know... Until you get in the room and you figure out that um, I'm the one that needs to be empty stomach or I'm the one that needs a, a bite or two of some food. Oh, yeah. There. I mean, I learned that really quick. He was making these shakes and, like, it was he was going to be teaching and I was going to take his class. And right before class, he's like, just have a sip of the shake. And I'm like, oh, I don't like to eat stuff before class. And he's like, just take a sip. That whole class, I was like, nah, why did I take a sip of that shake? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I learned my lesson. Like, for me, my body doesn't want to And I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure shake, shakes are your, your friend, though, Mike, just because... because Anything that is not s- solid, well, why do we have teeth? We got to chew, we got to break it down. So yeah. by having that blended up 
before us. Shakes are nice. I, I'm not a big. I don't like to eat a big meal in the morning, so I'll go for uh, some kind of a smoothie a lot of times. Just yeah. What are you, what are your thoughts on that? We go through so many phases, right? People have been talking more and more about this this breakfast uh, fasting. Yeah. Uh, what would be I'll your, do fasting too. What would be your advice for anyone? Well, uh, that's a, that's such a tough, tough question because my first question would be, well, what the heck are you training for? What are you yeah. doing? Right. It's, well, so you. You have to figure out what you want. First of all, it's a, I'm not a nutritionist. I don't, I don't do that. Um, but I would say that you want to figure out what are what are your goals, and then eat for your goals. And if you have no goals, then eat like a human. You know? Right. So I wouldn't eat processed foods. I mean, there's so many scientific studies that point to processed foods and processed meats specifically that tend to lead to cancer and problems. So let's stay away from that stuff. Eat. eat earth earth-grown nutrients as close to uh, their original form as possible, and I think that's what we're designed to eat. Right. If it's in the box or the center of the supermarket, <laughs> I probably would avoid it. Yep. And, if it, and as close if it to was zero it, if it sugar as possible. If it wasn't around yeah, 200 years ago, don't put it in your mouth. That, 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 that was the coolest one sentence like summary that yeah, I ever heard. I think that's important. Right, so just ask yourself. I think it's tough because bread was kind of around 200 years ago. It so was, but not the way they make bread the, these days. Yeah, you have to know no, no, no. what the company is. Right. And some of the more, there are brands that, you know, make bread the but way that they used to. My point was it's so tough to explain to people. And then when I heard that, it, it was this, this gentleman who was just three weeks uh, to share. He's into kind of the, the primal ketogenic type thing uh, mm -hmm. too. Now, I was just like, you just did it, man. One sentence, which is not easy to do, right? <laughs> as, a rule of, as a rule of thumb. Yeah. Um, but when you're coming to one of these classes, you don't want that burrito from you don't Chipotle. Want it it's coming right out. You're certainly going yeah. to be getting into the stomach, uh, stretching it and compressing it. Mm -hmm. So nothing in the stomach usually helps with that. And come in hydrated because you're going to sweat a lot. Um, and some people don't realize that they're not as hydrated as they think until they take a class and they leave dehydrated. Cramping. Yes. Yeah. That, so that's what that's what I was going to get to. Is however much water you think you drink. Uh, Double that. Again. Yeah, I would, it's still, I would it's never say never enough, right? Never and enough. you can't cram hydration. Hydration happens over the course of a day or over mm -hmm. the course of a week. Mm -hmm. um, and so, in other words, you can't pound a gallon of water before your class. That's bad. It's not going to work. No. But maybe if you were drinking, you can't pound a gallon. Water. Period. I think you could die. That's the only thing. That oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is such thing as too much water. Well, like, depending <laughs> on how big you are, all that stuff. So. But you'll find out. You know, the best thing to do is get in the class, stay in the room, acclimate to the heat, and then. Figure it out. So it's not all going to happen in one time. Yoga is designed to work on your body slowly over the course of time. So getting into the class is first step, and then the next. If one you is want to, to, if you want a shortcut, if you want to cheat to increase your chances to not walk out of the room, I feel that it honestly depends on how much water did you drink the night before. Yeah. And it's almost like a uh, uh, a chore, and I think athletes learn that. A lot of people who aren't athletes don't learn that. But if you put in the time with that. Um, to me, that was like you know better than any supplement or anything. Knowing that it's a battle of nutrition, and I drank the night before everything that I had to, and then during the day is just sipping water. Yeah. Later, I learned that Gatorade is not even that great. No. Gatorade. Well, there's sugar in there. Yep. I think Gatorade is great as. Uh, I learned from you that uh, basically uh, God's Gatorade before was basically coconut. I don't want to say coconut, juice, coconut, coconut water. Coconut is water. Yep. Yeah. A little sea salt in the water, and then some some lemon would would be good. Are you like the clay water too? Uh, clay water, yeah. Uh, uh, like Him clay. Himalayan salt. Check that out. You, you oh yeah. Of that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, that's uh, that's the only salt we use. At home. Right, because 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 <laughs> sadly, <laughs> sadly, you look for a hundred different sea salts. What are the odds of it not being that iodine fake stuff? Right. Yeah, yeah. you don't want that. You know, your yeah. your sweat. Be a little pink. Your sweat is the soup of all the vitamins and minerals that are inside of you. Let the man talk. Morgan says. My wife's probably ah. seen that too. <laughs> You're so right, That's Morgan. That's all right. He's always no, no, no. people, too. <laughs> Dude, I, I'll be the first to admit when I'm wrong. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, th that's huge. My, my year's resolution was uh, listen, then speak. Listen, then speak. And, obviously, I'm still sucking at it. Uh, but my weird thing is, like, something pops in my head. Uh, if I don't write it down, it's going right out the window. So, especially during talks like this, I feel like, okay, better paper and pen. I would have, like, eight things before you finish talking. Right? But I'm just like trying to blurt it out. Me and my wife, we love talking. So the whole time, the only arguments we get is we're talking over each other to explain our day that we're so excited. Like, let me go first. That's how, <laughs> that's how bad it is. But here's a loaded question. The, the benefits of, uh, 
uh, of yoga. Boom, I could just put my phone away. That'll be like the entire yes. talk right there. Yeah. Because because like it's, 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 it's so underrated, it's so underestimated how many different ones. Well, well, let's try. I would say that uh, the benefits of the, dip, there's different benefits to different yoga styles. Just like there's different, all, all the different forms of exercise have different benefits. Mm -hmm. So each yoga style has its own benefits. Uh, you know, the hot yoga style is, is centered around the health of the spine and the internal Hello organs. to Avantika. She's one of your guys' uh, uh, customers. And <laughs> Ramesh, I wanted to send you guys this YouTube case study, but it said make sure you cut wherever you are with off and engage and say hello to whoever joins. So, uh, so Morgan, I got an excuse to cut Mike off now. <laughs> He's been directed uh, to cut Mike But, but off. Now, I've, now I've accomplished everybody who's joined so far. Uh, I don't have to have no excuse uh, to, to cut you off. You think joints... Uh, I completely was reading the names and not listening. I know they were. The first one you just said was Mike. spine and organs. I mean, that, that, those are the most important part of the body. I Sense love, I love when people system. are narrating and telling me what's happening. Yeah. We appreciate that. Yeah. And I always think of uh, when I'm finally lying down, like, ah, pulling that right knee up. Okay, this is uh, cutting off circulation in this area, yeah. massaging this area. Yeah. Um, right? Um, when everyone's grabbing their two legs, saying, please don't fart. Right, that they're, 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 they're going to. I took my mom here and she <laughs> ripped <laughs> one. She couldn't control it. Yeah. Oh. Did you do it? Have a I, so I laugh. I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I'm so embarrassed. She started laughing. She's hilarious. That's good. You're getting uh, to talk some stuff. Too. Um, so I, I think that, in a nutshell, is that's what we mean by we we slowly go around every area, begin yes. uh, pinching off, sending the blood back, pinching off, saying yeah. So the the way that yoga typically works. Uh, makes the body healthy is through the tourniquet effect. So if you, each position cuts off blood supply to a specific part of the body, and then you, when, you release, when you release out of the position, fresh blood rushes into that area, and it starts to generate health. So if you, you, know, if you have a stream and you have stagnant pools, typically the stagnant pools of water where you're gonna find the bugs and the, the, all the bad stuff there. But if you dam off the water, break the dam, all that water flushes and, and gets rid of all of the stagnant pools, and all of that is happening inside of your body. And another reason, a benefit to drinking that much water yeah, the before water it's using, right? It's benefiting your session. Well, your body, it, it works best when it's hydrated. And if you're deliberately going to put yourself in an environment where it's going to release a lot of, of liquid, then it makes sense to go in like a pool sponge. Mike, what do you say to somebody who says, I don't know why I don't sweat. I don't sweat enough. We don't have any problem there with that. There are people. There yeah. are people like yeah. that? Okay. Because oh, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking yeah. in my mind, does that mean you didn't drink enough no. water? No, no. no. I mean, different people have, I mean, like, no. Mike's a heavy sweater. So, like, okay. he's, like his mask, yeah. be a lot of sweat on it at the end, end of the end of the class. You know, obviously I'm sweating during class, so it's damp, but it's not, you know, there's no puddle around me. Right. And I have encountered people who literally, I'm not like, you, I mean, as a person who sweats, you kind of look at them a little strange because you're like, how did you not sweat at mm -hmm. all? It's been 105 degrees for the last hour and a half. But it, it's just different people's bodies work differently. You know? and, and what's happening, which, which, which starts is basically that's our body's way of trying to cool us down while we're in that yeah. room. And I'm, I think you're the one who told me that, like, which is why it's not a good idea no matter how insecure you are, do it makes you feel comfortable, but uh, to wear heavy uh, clothes and stuff. I would wear the least amount of clothes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. And as nothing with trying to get you naked, it is literally <laughs> encouraging your session. Uh, and I say this because obviously we're all insecure, right? We all have our insecurities and we want to respect that. And uh, But it's so key to help you stay cool. That's the kind of weird stuff that goes through uh, my head. Uh, but tw tw I feel like 26 postures are going around in two circles of and we're touching each one and one's going to be for more amount of time what's going to be a less amount of time i didn't realize any of that i was thinking about that on the drive until like my 10th to 11th session of really what's going on yeah i, I think we're a little more in tune with our bodies because we're used you know being athletes all the injuries yeah. and stuff like that but uh man i'm proud of myself i had to sum it up in in one uh well, you, that's you know, essential there's so much more but the yoga, happening. the yoga is going to work. The yoga exercise is going to work on you, whether you know what's happening or not. Okay. You just have to come in and, and, and start to do them. And the more you get into it, the more obviously you're going to learn from the instructors that are telling you, or you might get inspired to read a book about it. Right. Um, but the more time you spend practicing and, and learning about it, the more it's wow, there really is so much. You, going you on. can talk like Roman if you ask a million questions, but at the end of the day, it's like your response has to be like, just do, just, just do, 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 and all your questions will go away because you'll learn. Uh, There's a couple things to keep people away. People are afraid of the heat, and then I just said, well, it's hot. Oh, we got our first question cold. ever. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> for, for someone doing uh, yoga for honing mindfulness, uh, how do you relate that 
uh, to Bikram Yoga. So tomorrow morning, if you do tune in, we got someone just talking about mindfulness. She's kind of an, an expert in that, but Mike, Mike can totally answer that question. So give the it, question, so the question one more time, because um, I talk super fast and slow. For someone, uh, for someone doing yoga for honing mindfulness, how would you relate that to Bikram Yoga? Uh, this is my buddy. He's, he's an MD. He's in, in New York now. So for mindfulness, well, when you're in the yoga class, the focus is on yourself. How about in English, Morgan? Next time with the question, how would oh, you, are you translating? <laughs> yeah, how, how would you how would you relate that to, to Bikram Yoga? So somebody who's doing it for the spiritual side of things, yeah, how would that relate? Well, to Bikram, Bikram Yoga is a very it's a very physical class, but the spiritual everybody's spirituality is very personal, and the, in here you're only going to be silent in the class. And the idea of the class is to focus inward. And you can make it as spiritual as you want. Um, all of the spiritual practices that I've ever practiced go hand in hand with some kind of physical exercise, and that really you can make it a spiritual. One aspect. with yourself. Yeah, I mean you're Bikram. connecting to yourself. I mean, in, in, I mean in Bikram you've got the mirror, right, for you to, to give an added extra if you, in case you forget yourself, you know, to really focus in on yourself that way, and that really helps me. Like I, I almost like the room kind of disappears, and I just hear the voice of the teacher, and I'm just in my movement, and I'm with myself. And people will talk to me afterwards about, like, the looks on my – because I smile at myself purposefully. Like, I have this whole thing about, like, giving myself positive energy and, like, smiling at myself. I especially smile at myself when I fall out of a balancing posture, you know, and just giving myself that kind of positive energy, especially in those kind of moments where I'm like, oh, I just stand, messed up. Oh, standing standing bow. When I look at myself and don't take my eyes off myself, I kill it. As yeah. soon as I don't. I, I, it's done. I don't. It's all over. Right? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. What, do you, what, do you, what do you think that is? You've probably done way more bows than I did. Does it help us balance in a way? Well, looking, yeah. looking. Having a focus point. The focus opposite, the opposite hand, point. having that out there is the only thing that really helps me, but I don't know. Well, Obviously, if we close our eyes, we would get dizzy. With you what is that? Well, well, for sure. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 open when you practice yoga. Talking to a doctor. Excuse me. Look that up. Why do we Why do we get dizzy when we close our eyes? They're almost so small. Roman may have a <laughs> uh, <laughs> totally, totally possible. In 2017, uh, uh, yeah, totally, totally possible. But also, I think it's therapeutic um, in 2017 to even get 90 minutes without talking alone to ourselves. Yeah. A guy who talks like there's me no too. cell phone, yes. there's no Apple Watch. Well, being forced to do no, that. Yeah. Probably more benefit than we realize. Um, I think that in today's society, that it, it's it's great to practice in a group of people, um, pull yourself out of your day. If, well, if you live here in this area, it tends to be crazy here in Silicon Valley. So you can pull yourself out of your day, turn the brain off, breathe, be with yourself, be with a group of people. Me time. And, Me time. and it, it, it's just a great experience. Because I'll tell you, I know a lot of people that have, um, they want to do their own home practice, and before you know it, they're on their phone or uh, screen something that pulls them out. Yeah, the screen time is a big deal. And they were going to practice for an hour and they got 10 minutes in. It's like, you know what? If you come in and you get in the room, you're not leaving. You're there for an hour and a half and you get a, you know, an instructor to, to guide you through it. And before you know it, you've done way more yoga than you would do on your own. And uh, everybody's been there. And your, 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 your body talks to you in that way. It's almost addicting where your body's like, please go back. Once you yes. really break, you, you're going to hate the first one no matter what. But... If you take Mike's, <laughs> if you take Mike's challenge, I feel like it's almost. I don't want to say that your hook, but your body's talking to you, saying that, man, I feel incredible. Yeah. The next, well, actually, for me, I don't know if it's for you guys. You shower, you're exhausted, you go to bed. The next morning, when I did my bedroom that night before, I told my wife, I jump out of bed for some yeah. reason. Yeah, which is crazy. Energy. One thing got to be careful though is I do get the feeling after the, when I come back, my body just wants more water, but. Um, I tend to want to just splurge that night where I can, you know what I'm talking about, oh, right? Yeah. Um, oh, you but, but, eat. Yes. You oh, yeah. When I first started food, practicing, yeah. like, I was probably wants water. Like, but ravenous, man. We just, like, but we give it solid food. Instead. Well, there is some of that. Sometimes the, the uh, you think you're hungry, but you're really thirsty. There's some of that. Uh, when in doubt, try to drink. There is some food. of a healing process going on, so your body could be wanting nutrients so it can start the healing process. There. There is some of that, so I would say maybe avoid the burger and the pizza kind of routine and go for something a little bit more nutrient dense, like a and salad. The, so the bigger one gets easy, but then I slack off. I take a week uh, off uh, again, and, and then my body tells me a completely different story when I come back, uh, right? <laughs> and, and it's this constant cycle, but I think that's almost cool because I know that it's detoxifying me. Right? Yeah. I know 
And you don't even want to try. You think you could be cool and trying to pull it up? Off hungover? No. No, it hurts to it's, do it when you've been The alcohol. only time yeah. I ever react in a class, so I have to excuse myself. And yes. Yeah, not a, I, I, but we all think we're tough. Work. Right. We all think we're tough, but this is, <laughs> that's how you know it's good for you because this is one where, you know, you can't be that tough. Oh, this is cute. I said, where did you get, where did you get you and Rose meet? Oh, yeah. This, <laughs> is, not, this is not a family talk show. <laughs> you're a lot of, but, but, but you kind of uh, said that. But we did because, I mean, my, yeah. my friend that I was teaching preschool with was practicing yoga where he was, and she came to him and, and that's said, how you met. Yeah. hey, you know, you single, you know, come to me, hey, there's this guy at the yoga studio, and we got, it was back in the MySpace days, we were checking out we each, other's each other's MySpace, MySpace profiles. Yeah. Oh, my this God. This guy seems okay. I'm like, what's the worst <laughs> thing that can happen a bad date? He thinks he's helping out. This girl with her loser friend, you know, that needs a date. And, you gotta ask, man. You and it worked out day. pretty amazingly. Ten years later, here we are. For so. anybody listening, imagine uh, uh, if they didn't. So, one in doubt, do that, right? Yeah, so I mean, you know, the worst the worst thing that happened, happened. reject a big deal. Yeah, Forget is this the end of the world right? if I go on a bad date? No. But, but regrets, I It was an amazing date. Regrets, I, I can't my soulmate. live with. Right? And, uh, <laughs> but I would not ask. The worst thing that would have happened is a bad date. So that's, and then that'd be a story too, Dinner's right? over, time to drop you <laughs> off. Right. And then I'd go back to the, the studio and go, what are you doing? I'm never going to take another date from you again. I not recommend any of your friends. It sucks. So no, instead the story is like we had a marathon date with like a dinner and then an art walk and a movie. And then, I, you know, and then of course my friend was, you know, at our wedding, you know, honored at our wedding. Like here's right. Lana who introduced us. And, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I can, I can feel the vibe of you guys and what's meant to be with you, right? So you, right. you guys have always been... Uh, super show. I hope that answers it, Mo. I want to save the meditation talk uh, for tomorrow, but I think anything we, we have to do it consistently, right? Yeah, consistency is the key. I mean, if, with anything, and if you decide to come in and do a yoga practice, I will. A lot of times, like the, like you explained, the, the first class or two or five or ten is going to be a rough experience, and to do month or two or three yes in anything good for you any everything is like that <laughs> right. and i'll tell you is it just well, just is be a beginner make it hard and then after two or three months you're either going to fall in love with it or you're going to decide this this particular thing isn't for me and then move on but i think people hop around too much right. do you know i recommend people do 60 to 90 days straight like don't, don't take Ooh. any days off and everybody's got knee injuries mike for, for anybody who's having trouble with their knee or has had knee surgeries, um, and we're talking years ago, they've healed down everything, uh, something like this would be more or less uh, therapeutic. Uh, uh, quickly, I feel like this helped me so much, uh, two meniscus tears, but yeah. never really got that scar tissue out. And I feel like when I finally got to this, that this was almost saved me from surgery because yeah. I, I strengthened my joints. Uh, yeah. Gosh, you gotta just do. So hard for us to explain. The this, therapeutic but. benefits of of yoga are too numerous to list and the, the joints the knees specifically can totally be you know healed through the practice um, obviously if you're not doing the exercises correctly you can do damage but if you do everything so why be a good place you, good teachers yeah you, if you do everything the way it's prescribed um, I, I know very few people that their body comes out worse than when they walk in. Mm -hmm. I know more people that um, heal themselves doing these kind of exercises on a regular basis. Right, right. And, and, and uh, for, for all the uh, uh, short people out there, it does make you taller. Yeah, uh, I'm five foot one. I literally remember that. For a and and that was in my head before you walked in now. I wasn't, I swear, completely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, why will we talk about oh, reading closer? Like we're going to start to get a crowd. Oh, yeah, that's okay. How cool is that? <laughs> uh, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So, so in our spine, um, as we get older, and as people people who have hunchbacks too, uh, they start to kind of break away. But well, the vertebrae, you know, the gravity pulls you down. Right. And this stuff is, you know, what we're doing is finding space in the vertebrae and keeping moving the spine in a specific way. A lot of times, the people that, that you see hunched over just haven't exercised in a specific way. And, right. Uh, that's I can guarantee you that's not going to be. And that's another great thing for, for ba basketball players too. And some of us uh, hunch over and so forth. But I literally would me measure. I started get, uh, asking people if I actually got taller, and I usually measure myself. But I felt as far as my spine. No, after because here's the thing: the the first thing when we start off, uh, and we have to. And I was looking at this at your blog article too: the hand grips, right? When we change our hand grips, and when we have our hands over, uh, if you're one of those. You know, bulky lifters uh, on like I could not even touch my hands. Yeah, oh, yeah I did, I got the, which is horrible. I had, <laughs> I had zero mobility. 
Uh, but what happened slowly, slowly from my scapula, I was able to yeah. uh, you know, get closer to my ears actually yeah. uh, to my head. Right. But in, in essence, what am I doing if you're in a, sitting in a chair all day is you're, you're strengthening the spine. You're a little more upright. I found myself, yeah. everybody's like, why are you sitting so? And I'm yeah. like, I didn't even know I was doing it. You know, it was, uh, I've it, told so many times that I, I have good posture. Posture, yes, yes, yes. 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 Which, what I that, do. that is huge. Yeah. Posture, all right? <laughs> Uh, is, is there any truth to what, what I said in your opinion? You can you can disagree with me. But do you feel that uh, it would help people's spines? As it, a it 100% will help your spine. And uh, will it make you taller? I don't know. That's a little... I don't know. I'm five foot one and I haven't seen anything. Right there. But, uh, <laughs> I think that, that, that's more of goes into the wives' tale. Uh, yes. <laughs> it'll keep you coming. Or, yes, it'll make you taller. Come on in. Let's give you hope. <laughs> no, no. See, and I, I'm, I'm totally... Uh, yeah, exactly, and that's what I want. I want, I want to be challenged. I would never get uh, mad if uh, if I said anything that was inaccurate. And if people uh, come in mind, this is like a straight up talk show, man. We're educating the process. You. We're we're saving. So as long as it's cool with you, it's uh, it, it's cool with me. Besides the benefits, let me see if I have any uh, good questions for you here. So now that you've started, for anybody else who's listening, from the business aspect, what have you done? Whole different world. Mm. Doing what you love, right? Uh, yeah. What would you recommend to, like, to any business owners um, out there uh, who are just starting up? Let's say there's some kid who, who loves this and he's going to open up his first uh, studio. Uh, hindsight is 2020. Is there anything off the top of your head, any advice you would give to that kid? You could probably write a book on it, but uh, that you wish you would have been well, smarter about finding a location. The thing that I would say is that. Have a beer with stick, me and then we'll talk. Well, I was going to say stick to your guns and don't let people That's tell huge. you what you should be doing within huge. your business because you'll get that, why don't you do this, why don't you do that. Well, <laughs> this is what we do here. And um, if you start straying away from things that you don't want to do, then you won't be happy. Because you just lost your why. And well, that would was be like you, Well, here's the thing. Like, let's say, um, you know, you own uh, Subway yeah. sandwiches. How about people come in and go, why don't you guys have tacos? Right, right. Then, cool. Your core competencies. Stick that's to that's right. And then all of a sudden you've got tacos, and it's like, what are you Subway. doing? <laughs> the sandwiches go downhill, and all of a sudden so Subway's got tacos, that. and it's like, well, what's going on? And so they, they brought in taco they, brought, they, they brought in these these flat teasers. They brought in these we little had tacos. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, who said tacos? There we are. Now there's a suggestion that tacos here at the other studio. Uh, so. <laughs> no, but, uh, Mike, they brought in these little flat teasers, these little pizzas. They yes. go, and they're like, oh, there's huge margin on there. So there's huge margin. And I stood up and was like, guys, that's great, but what are we known for? We're not. You're a we're sandwich not, place. You know, yeah. we're known for being healthy. This is the worst thing we're doing. And then offering these to kids, too. Uh, I don't care how profitable it is. It's, there's some points in time where you gotta stick to your core competencies. Yes. That, that's the, the marketing term that we would always learn, and it's very important that you forget about. That, that's where we always merge what's profitable versus what are your standards, right? right? Let's get good at making sandwiches. That's what we do. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Low blow. Sorry, mom. You didn't mean it. Mike doesn't mean that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But but I get what you're saying with that as far as following your. Uh, yeah, stay with it. Get good at what you're doing. People will come in, and. Um, even with good intentions, the people that love you the most in your life, your mom, your dad, your wife, will often be the people in your ear that take you away from them. Do you guys agree when you're taking a risk by doing your business they don't think it's a great idea? Oh, yeah, doctor, I see. You know, you're talking about the doubters or people that, uh, you know, don't, don't quite have your passion for it. Yeah, right. And, of course, they don't know. Yeah. So exactly. they're going to, why would you do this? Why would you do that? And why are you taking that yeah. risk? Right. So just go for it. You know, if other mind. people are doing it. Um, you know, the biggest risk is people trying to make it But if there's other businesses out there that you're trying to open, don't figure out what they're doing. And um, you don't need to invent the wheel nowadays. Right. You know, get in and do it. Do it well. Uh, I'm just going to give a shout out to the, the showers here. I think that uh, that was a clutch move. Uh, <laughs> Amazing. When you go to when you go to high yield places, they don't have. Should we pretend like the showers, showers weren't uh, here when we started? <laughs> oh, they're there. Okay. Hey, whether they were here before or after, they're here. So. Oh, we totally put those showers uh, in. They're amazing. You no, know, ba balance is so much more than that. But obviously, that's a huge value. You you play nice you play a role reversal at the end of the day, and you've been in that situation. Have a great day, guys. See Mike and Tony too. Uh, and. Uh, Last getting out, so you get to see all the sweaty people that are coming out of the room. 
I think that is the coolest experience we've had <laughs> so far. As long as they're uh, they're, they're cool with it, uh, <laughs> they're not getting it. Yeah, but th those those little things uh, really really help. Mike, we, we got. I don't want to throw any right hooks or be silly. We got any challenges like going on? Uh, you you're doing. I was so proud of you when you're actually doing the star a day, right? I'm trying to get. I gotta be consistent at Vikram. I'm forcing to be consistent at crazy marketing stuff. So. We'll do it. We'll do another 30 day challenge in October. Right now we're waiting on summer. We're waiting. We're letting the summer end. And what is a 30 day challenge for somebody who doesn't know? Do, do class every day for 30 days. We do class every day for 30 Typically, days. Typically people need about 30 days to get into a room. Mm -hmm. And like I was saying, you really need to do it consistently. Yes. Right. You gotta challenge yourself. And after, yeah, and it's, it's a challenge to come 30 days. Um, but you really will get the benefits. Yeah, mostly works right now. And at least 30 days. So we and incentivize. What do they get? If they, well, they get a, well, they get a nice, a nice healthy spine and a big smile. But they also get a shirt. And, 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 no, and a space uh, on the wall. The, the space on the, on the wall. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's cool. Uh, to me, I sound little, but I mean, we're, we're little, we're little three-year-olds at heart. We're like, hey, my name's, well, my name's on the wall out there. We all want a little good job pat on the back. It's huge. No, it is not. Uh oh, we gotta get Roman's name on the wall. That's how bad. All the friends out there, peer pressure him. <laughs> that, that is how bad I've been. Uh, well, see, uh, ma ma materials, you guys do not have a carpet. Some people do have a carpet. When I'm, no, reading, no when I'm reading through reviews, obviously people hate that, right? Um, Everybody feels different. What, what, it, what yeah. material did you guys go through that was it was so different? It's pretty cool. You got to actually walk on it. We've, 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 it's yeah. gone now. It's oh. actually tile now. Yeah, we've got oh, tile. Okay. And, and there's, is there a slippery tile too, right? Um, well, it's heard, tiles. Well, what made you do that? It was easier well, to maintain. the tile was underneath it. The flooring, okay. it was the just time. It's been seven had, years. Yeah. It was time to take oh. it out. You know? We pulled it out and then we just, like, put the tile in the same. Oh, and what was yeah, that, was what was that uh, flooring? It was like this nasty it's little... Pen flooring, yeah. yeah. That was my main question. Yeah, Pam, yeah, so it, it looks like a bunch of rubber bands glued together, yeah, right? I know, it's, it's, it's like, perfect. I think if you maybe want to go online, it's pemflooring.com. Pemflooring, it's great for Screw pemflooring.com. Really like Balance yeah. Yoga Center. <laughs> online. <laughs> Balance Yoga Center, yes. online.com. Are you, you still writing uh, on there at all, on Mike? You, was that blog that you posted, somebody else's? The newsletter? I, that was uh, some friends of mine. Though. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh, amazing. I like the folks that are getting into the history of where all this stuff began. Yes. There's a lot of history that people don't know about, um, so when I, I, I like to, to share that. Yeah, share it. This I, the first person I brought up, he was the father of the other steps of G. I don't yep, know what he's yeah. uh, And we were at the part of yoga challenge, contortionists, people, uh, things evolving in India, especially after uh, the British. Where do you feel how yoga has gone since? Uh, then as time passed on, I, I, I the silly thing is don't throw the politics in there. Like, I know that I'll in the room, and I refuse. I refuse to bring that up at all. <laughs> it doesn't deserve our, our, our time. Oh, it's it's widely it's known right. now that Americans are better at yoga than anyone. Ooh, <laughs> shots fired. So, well, Americans think so. It's, <laughs> it's, Americans think they're better at everything. You know, I think so. that, that we tend to get really nerdy about things and, and geek out on on how to do things and. And it just kind of becomes more than it than it maybe was, right. and um, so it, yoga is so prominent throughout the states. So it's silly. You know, friends of mine go to India and come back and say that they hear about that all the time. Oh, you're American. You do better than us. You, you do yoga better than we do here in India. No question. Let's just laugh. <laughs> okay, Mike. You you uh, I want to talk about breathing for a quick second. Okay. Of this. Have you heard of, uh, of Wim Hof? Have you yeah. studied him a little bit. Yeah. Okay. I feel like we're the same person, the man. We're, <laughs> we're nerds at the weirdest. Yeah, he's, the, he's the cool guy. Yeah, so he's, we the, he's the complete him. opposite, but the same benefits. Doing, uh, doing this cold running. And like, what is he doing? And at the end of the video, it was like an hour-long documentary. At the end of the video, he was doing all these yoga breathing techniques. And I went, knew it. I knew he was a yogi. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, he's, he's, he's got researchers studied, around he's him. He studied or? yoga for a very long time and then started to test himself in the cold. And it's the breathing techniques that keep your body warm, and it's, it's mind control. I guess what got him to that point, uh, to his wife uh, committed suicide. Oh, really? And oh, that's, oh, that's what pushed him to oh, really start finding himself and trying those things. And now he's surrounded by researchers, right? What was the ice thing? He's able to withstand, well, you know, be very able, nice. He's, he's able to be I'm just ex submerged, extremely cold. I mean, normal people would freeze, and he's able yep. to just hang out. And he attributes it to breathing, breathing, and, and yeah. I mean, you could, you could 
body with breath. Well, there's mindfulness does. too. He's and he's finally he amazing. He's, he's finally really documenting awesome. the way that we're documenting. So a lot of the fighters were going to him, and now people are fascinated. If you if you put in Wim Hof breathing, the first one that'll pop up now. I did, I did that for my my nap. Is this is one minute thing where he has this this kid who came in to document with him, like um, this kid bothering Mike right now, and you will feel insanely better after that. Um, and uh, so I suggest everybody check that out. Uh, how are we doing uh, on time here? I think we're good to wrap up music. Yeah, oh, we're, 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 really we're right, we're right at 50, 50 minutes. Uh, any, anything else you guys want to say? Check you out uh, on Balance Yoga Balance Center. Yoga Center. Where, where's our, I'll check into our address, but anybody who's listening, you guys are right off of. So we're off the of Hellier and Silver Creek, right at the bottom of the hill. I want right to. Off the highway. Th this is this is my favorite couple in the world. They're super chill. Uh, the environment here is super positive and good. I think that's why a lot of people come here. So highly recommend you guys all check it out. So it's sixty dollars for your first month. Come on in, give us a try. Plug, plug. <laughs> yeah. but huge thank you to Mike and Rose. Um, thank you guys. You guys take care. Check out Balance Yoga Center. Thanks, right, dudes. Yeah. Shake everyone's hands. Go back to the president. It's a formality. <laughs> uh, not the president. But take care, guys. I'll, uh, I'll throw this up on YouTube and do a write up uh, uh, after. Thank you guys so much all for joining. Peace.